Hi, welcome to Contemporary Cannabis with Davina and Dr. Swathi, brought to you by Razzle and the Razzle Cannabis Broadcasting Network. I'm Davina. I'm Dr. Swathi. Thanks so much for joining us today. We are here to introduce our new show that will tell you all about the knowledge and the intricacies behind the endocannabinoid system, cannabis, and other plant medicines to help empower you to make those decisions to improve your life. Now a word from our sponsors. Apricot Analytics is a full-service product quality lab for cannabis testing and CBD and hemp testing. They have over a decade of analytical lab experience and have been working with cannabis products since 2005. Apricot Analytics understands the needs of cannabis and hemp producers because they were producers themselves. They know the challenges, the frustrations, and the dreams of cultivators and manufacturers. They get it because they've been there, and they're here to help. Apricot Analytics tests your products for the good stuff, like THC uh, and CBD concentrations, and helps you identify any of the bad stuff, like pesticides, mold, bacteria, and heavy metals. For more information, go to apricotanalytics.com, or to learn more about their current investment opportunity, go to the Razzle Investment Marketplace at razzle.com. And now we're back. So Davina, can you tell our listeners a little bit about you and your background? Yeah, so my background started out actually in human resources and working with startup companies and operational strategy and business strategy. But what I found out is that it never answered my why. And so that led me onto my entrepreneurial journey, uh, which eventually brought me here to um, starting Element Apothic Mm -hmm. and really being able to help people live healthier and better lives. Mm -hmm. Great. And can you tell us a little bit more about Element Apothic? Yeah, so Element Apothic is a new disruptive CBD brand really focused on bringing clean, safe, and effective products to the consumer in the phytocannabinoid space. We believe that the consumer deserves better, and so many companies are not delivering on the promise of CBD, and consumers don't really know who or what to trust. And so we're coming at it at the approach of being a trustworthy brand that conscious consumers really can trust and believe in the products that we bring. But not only that, is to educate the consumer, as you said, to really empower them to make decisions that can help them in terms of the product choices they make and how to live lives that are stronger, healthier, and better for themselves. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Swathi, can you tell me a little bit about your background and what brought you into this industry? Sure. I'm a pharmacist based in LA, and I specialize in integrative health as well as medical cannabis. And it really all started for me even before pharmacy school. I knew that I was always interested in holistic wellness and overall looking at the patient as a whole. And I feel like that was something that was missing in pharmacy school for me. I kind of searched for it. I did all these great different rotations trying to look for it. And I finally stumbled upon this incredible pharmacist who's still in LA. um, And she gave me the opportunity to train with her. Um, And so she really helped teach me everything that I know today. Um, And she's just such a great mentor. So from there, I've had the opportunity to work in a lot of different settings from the hospital to industry to actual pharmacies and like everything in between. Um, And so overall, I'm just so excited to be here. And I'm so excited to be a part of the educational process for the listeners because Overall, my passion and drive really is to help educate. And I know that the endocannabinoid system and cannabis and everything can be so complicated right. <laughs> that um, I'm really excited that we're here to break it all down episode by episode. <laughs> so let's start with the first topic. But before we do, I think as we go through these topics, there's going to be so much information. And so we've talked about continuing in episodes going more in depth into each of these subjects so that you can really understand and have more knowledge when you make your decisions on what products you're going to buy and how you're actually going to implement this into your daily lives. We're also really open to questions. Mm -hmm. So if you have any questions, you can reach us on our Instagram or through the show um, on our website, and we would love to incorporate those into future episodes that we do as well. So the first topic is what is CBD? Because there's so much confusion out there about what is CBD and and what makes it up and how do you get it? So can you explain to us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so this is the golden question. This is the question I get the most. Um, So CBD. So even before starting with CBD, I think it's important to talk about what is cannabis and then what is CBD. So really breaking that down, cannabis is the whole plant. 
whereas CBD is only one of the compounds in the plant. And so also in the plant we have terpenes, which we'll do episodes right. about. I love terpenes. Um, <laughs> and then we'll also do episodes on the other cannabinoids and everything else that's in the plant, like THC too. Um, but overall CBD, what we need to know is that it's only one component of the whole plant, so we can't use CBD and cannabis interchangeably like that. Right. Um, and then when it comes to the endocannabinoid system, we can talk a little bit about that next. Yes. Yeah, so what is the endocannabinoid system and what does that even mean? Because I think there's so much misinformation and many people don't even know what that word actually is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So the endocannabinoid system, so even just breaking down the word endocannabinoid, endo meaning inside or like endogenous is really what it comes from. Um, and then cannabinoid being all those components I was talking about, CBD being a major cannabinoid, then there are other minor cannabinoids as well. Um, so just talking about the system that encapsulates all of these cannabinoids and the way it works in the system or the way it works in your body, really. Um, and the big thing with the endocannabinoid system is that it's linked to so many organ systems in the body, um, and it's linked because there are receptors found in so many different organ systems. Um, and so, for example, there's two receptors that we know a lot about, CB1 and CB2. And between those receptors, um, people generally associate CB1 being more affiliated with the um, central nervous system versus CB2 being more affiliated with the immune function in the body. So when it comes to the endocannabinoid system, the overall goal is to promote homeostasis in the body. And what that really means is balance. And so because those receptors are found in so many different organ systems, it's linked to those. And so we know that if the endocannabinoid system is out of whack or, you know, an imbalance, that possibly other organ systems are too. Um, yeah. So I know something that seems to be a common question and theme is, what is CBD versus THC? And there's confusion if, if CBD can get me high or um, what's going to happen with a drug test. And so there's just so much confusion out there about what it is. And I think people interchange it and often think that CBD is THC mm -hmm. or THC has CBD, so can you explain <laughs> a little bit about that? Sure. So even before talking about that, um, I was talking about endocannabinoids, so those are the ones that are synthesized in your body on demand. Um, but what she's talking about, CBD and THC, those are phytocannabinoids. And so phyto meaning it comes from the plant. And so your body's not making CBD or THC. You're only going to get that if you're consuming the plant. So when we're comparing CBD and THC, really it comes down to where it's binding in the body. So I said there are cannabinoids um, receptors in so many different organ mm -hmm. systems and that the CB1 receptor is really most uh, densely populated in the central nervous system. And so um, something to know is that THC has a high affinity for that CB1 receptor, and so that's the one where you're going to get those euphoric and intoxicating effects. Which um, is what people kind of associate cannabis with, or, or have at mm -hmm. least in the past up to this point. Exactly. Where CBD, we don't know exactly where it binds. We know it doesn't have a high affinity for CB1, um, therefore it's not going to elicit those same euphoric um, effects. Another thing I wanted to break down, too, is that term psychoactive. Okay. Um, a lot of people use the term psychoactive, and really all that means is that it's active in your brain, and they both are active in the brain because they're, they're the endocannabinoids as well as the cannabinoid receptors in your brain. Um, so I think that that term is a little bit of a misnomer. Instead, we use euphoric or intoxicating when talking about the patient feeling high um, and um, the fact that all the cannabinoids really are psychoactive. Right. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. there's a lot of confusion around there because people hear psychoactive and they think, what is that going to make me feel? Can I drive? What can mm -hmm. I do? But really, it's, it, it, it does all active your mind and your body. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of, again, do you feel euphoric and uplifted or are you just kind of more relaxed or just going about your everyday life and right. I think there's a lot of confusion around that or people are scared even that CBD is going to make them not have the ability to do certain things. Mm -hmm. Since 2008, California Lightworks has been guided by a vision focused on the research, design, development, and manufacturing of state-of-the-art commercial LED grow lights and automation equipment for greenhouse and indoor horticulture. By applying the latest advances in high efficiency, solid state lighting, and controls technology, their team provides worldwide growers new grow lights that deliver clear benefits at a competitive price. 
Backed by their solid reputation for standing behind their products, California Lightworks also offers industry-leading warranties on all their commercial grow lights. To learn more about California Lightworks, go to CaliforniaLightworks.com, and to view their current investment opportunity, please go to the investment marketplace at Razzle.com. So as we're talking about CBD, I know there's a range of CBD products out there. There's full spectrum and broad spectrum and isolate. What does that all mean? Because I think there's a lot of confusion when people see labels Mm -hmm. and they don't always understand it. And is it legal for me to use or is it not legal? Mm -hmm. So can you go a little bit into the aspects of CBD and and the extraction methods and what produces full spectrum, broad spectrum versus isolate. Yeah, definitely. So um, you mentioned the urine test before, so this is gonna play in perfectly to answer that question. Um, So when we're talking about isolate versus broad spectrum versus full spectrum, um, I think we should start from full and then we can go down from there. Um, So full spectrum really is everything possible in the plant. There's a chance it will be in that formulation. So what that means is that it can have CBD, like we will have CBD, (laughs) Um, and then also other minor cannabinoids that we'll talk about in future episodes, terpenes as well, which is what gives um, the cannabis its aroma, as well as other therapeutic benefits too. Um, So you'll find all of that in the full spectrum. And the other thing is that you'll find THC, but we don't need to be scared or anything about THC um, because there's only 0.3% of THC found in the full spectrum products. And that's because of the farm bill in 2018 that made industrial hemp legal. And so what they defined industrial hemp meaning that it has less than 0.3% of THC in it. So by full, that's really what that means. Um, And then broad spectrum is everything I just mentioned except no THC. So it will have CBD, it will have all the other amazing benefits that you can get from all the other components, um, but just no THC. And in that, is there ever really, really small amounts of THC that might end up in that? Because I know that some people have that question, or Mm -hmm. even when they're looking at products and trying to understand, I see on this, uh, you know, COA that there's a small amount of THC, maybe 0.01. So can that still be considered broad spectrum under the definition? That's a great question. I mean, I think it's possible just simply with the extraction methods and how complicated that is in the manufacturing process. I think that it is possible, but I think the overall goal of that company was not to have any THC in it. (laughs) it. Um, So it's really important to follow up with the company. Um, A lot of them will have their COA or certificate of analysis already posted on their website, and so that's really easy to access, but if they don't, then you can reach out to the company and they should be able to answer your questions, whether they're specific or just even send you the COA. Um, So then you really know if you can trust that company or not. (laughs) Right, yeah, that's really important. Mm -hmm. And so what is CBD isolate? Because that's another whole thing that's thrown into this. Yeah, so CBD isolate is, so if we're going down from the most included with full spectrum, then we took off THC and we we became broad spectrum, and then now we're going to isolate means it's isolated, really. I think it's named very well. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, It's just CBD. And so that means we've taken out all the other cannabinoids, we've taken out all the terpenes, all the other possible components in the plant, and we only have CBD in that product, or that's the overarching goal of that product, yeah. And mm-hmm. we can talk about more in other episodes why some companies do that and why mm-hmm. do you choose full spectrum versus broad spectrum yeah. versus isolate and what that actually means in terms of your body and, and uh, the implications and, and values that it supports with, with those various mm-hmm. aspects of it. And the potential synergies between cannabinoids, so we'll talk about that. Right, yeah, mm-hmm. that'll be great. So if I'm, I'm a new patient and I'm <laughs> interested in CBD, how do I know what dose to start with? Who do I even talk to about where to begin? Mm-hmm. Um, so when it comes to questions like that, it's so patient specific because it comes down to what they're trying to treat, their other diagnoses, um, what other medications they're on, and really their overall treatment goals. Like what are they looking for and what are they looking to get out of using cannabis? Um, And so I think the best way to go about that is to talk to a specialist. Um, There are quite a few that you can find online, like us, um, (laughs) or there are other ones, too, that are doing telemedicine or the online visits. Um, So you're able to really break down everything that you're doing and also your lifestyle. Um, A lot of people like certain formulations over others or they have those preferences, so really important, too. 
so yeah, I think that that is the most important is just starting with a specialist. Um, and I think that um, everyone can have access to it if you just Google or you ask us. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. Right. And then um, a lot of the research points to people using 10 to 20 milligrams to start when it comes to CBD. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, I, I think that's still really like just quite a range mm -hmm. because, um, I mean, I know people who get benefit from CBD at 5 milligrams. Right. So when, um, you, when so. you recommend that they, that they do to start if they're just starting out and, and have this tincture in front of them <laughs> and it's 10 milligrams, what would be the best way to begin? Yeah, so it depends on whether or not the patient has experienced cannabis before. So we call that either cannabinoid naive mm -hmm. or not cannabinoid naive. So if the patient is cannabinoid naive, then I would start very low. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would start probably five mm -hmm. and then go from there. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, talking to a specialist about how potentially to increase that, not increase it too quickly. Right. Um, and I think also it's important, too, if you're getting that therapeutic benefit and even though your friend is taking a lot more, but you don't need to take as much, then that means you should just stay at that dose too. Got it. Um, and then if they are not cannabinoid naive, then they have some sort of idea of how they've responded to cannabis in mm -hmm. the past. Um, and so that could help lead you to potentially starting a little bit higher, right. maybe starting at that 10 instead. Yeah, because your body already is used to it, mm -hmm. and, and you don't have to go through almost the, the learning curve of understanding how it impacts your body. Mm -hmm. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you for joining us today. We would love to have any questions, so please submit those. Again, you can go to our website or Instagram account and let us know, um, and we're more than happy to answer them on our future episodes. Yeah, and as she said, in the upcoming episodes, we're going to talk about so many different topics from the endocannabinoid system and really delving into some of those cannabinoids I briefly mentioned, some of those terpenes, and also where CBD could fit into your life. Um, so please, again, submit those questions. And based on the questions, we can even formulate episodes that are specifically on a question that we get asked frequently. So just let us know. Thanks so much for joining us for the first episode of Contemporary Cannabis with Davina and Dr. Swathi. Thank you for joining us today. See you soon.